I reach out his mom. I'm just reading just to just to tell you I love you. Have a good time. Take care. Um, yeah, just text us when you when you arrive. Let us know that you've arrived. And um, hope everything goes all right for you. Okay. All right. Speak to you later. Love you. Bye bye. I don't ever even remember someone having a camera. This is a story of identity, discovery, loss, and starts with this man. My dad, or pups as we called him, was born in the Caribbean island of Dominica. And so was my mum. In fact, all of my extended family descended from Dominica, and I still have family living there now, many in their 80s plus. But despite this and our rich ancestry, I've never been. My name is Richard Etienne. I'm a father, filmmaker, and author. To mark the 10th anniversary of Pups' passing in 2004, I set off on a solo adventure to Dominica in an attempt to draw closer to the island, its history, the culture, and the people who shaped who I am today. I'm English just by looking at me, so I haven't, I haven't even opened my mouth. Uh... Having no clue of what lay ahead, would I be prepared for any surprises that came my way? What would I change about Dominica? I was telling him that if he's an Italian family, he's an Italian guy. I'll tell the story to the day I die. It is like folklore now that there are three Italian brothers who came from Matnik, one stayed to Fria, one went to the East, one stayed in Point Michel. And what of my experience can I bring back to the UK to persuade others to visit their country of heritage? I can use this as a reflector. <laughs> Welcome to ID Project, my Dominica story. Richard Etienne Sr. passed away from a rare autoimmune disease called sarcoidosis. It brought to a sudden end decades of hospital visits and a loss of mobility that had been with him since his early 20s. What causes lung failure plus your patient's previous symptoms? Well, you may not have heard of this fairly uncommon autoimmune disease, but it can happen to anyone. Over the weekend, comedian and actor Bernie Mac passed away at the age of 50. The funny man suffered from a disease called sarcoidosis. Well, you've started with probably the most difficult question. How do you put in simple terms a disease that is so dimly understood? Our healthy immune systems learn to protect us from disease and infection. That's a great thing. But if you have sarcoidosis, your immune cells may mistakenly harm your healthy cells, leading to inflammation and to tissue and organ damage. Tao was right. It's sarcoidosis. The tobacco releases toxins. Those toxins suppress his immune system. Once he quit chewing, the absence of those toxins kicked the dormant condition into hyperdrive. 
The unifying feature seems to be a loss of balance of the immune system. There are a number of triggers in different people. So I think that this loss of immune balance arises when people are unlucky enough to run into a trigger that they can't handle well with their makeup. I see, I see. My pops' unlucky moment came when a blood clot was discovered in his heart and we sadly said our goodbyes in October of 2004. He was 51. My brother and I often speak about pups and think about what a journey to Dominique would be like and wonder why we've never been as a family. How many other Etienne's are out there completely unknown to us? What stories do they have? Thankfully, I know a couple of people who are well versed in all things Dominica. Hey man, fellow Dominican. Sakafe. Yeah, Sakafe. Wow, I said Sakafe, he said yeah. <laughs> this ain't no Dominican documentary, this is a fox, bro. Conversations. Telling me where I'm from Would you buy a one-way ticket and fly to a sea other than where you're from? One factor could be a generational thing because, um, okay, you've got um, people who, like my parents, like I say, came when they were 15 and 20 respectively and then um, there were other people who may have been second generation or other people who came when they were um, like eight and so the way um, they're growing up, they know Britain as their home because through adolescence like through and I mentioned adolescence because um, at the time I guess you kind of de develop a sense of individuality and so depending on where you grow up will ultimately determine what kind of person you are there's no one who asks about this at all because there's no one like no one even no one wants to talk about it yeah no one knows like, or no one knows anyone that wants to talk about it or you don't know that you want to talk about it yeah and that's the thing I'm more than proud to be from that Like, I hope that I'll get to a status where I can <laughs> tattoo it on my back and then perform topless in freaking Glastonbury. Is that maybe a little bit why you wrote sooner or later? Is yeah, it? without a doubt. It's, it's a beautiful thing because I know who my family is. Like I, I know, I know who my cousins are. I know who my aunties are, and and to the point where I know what their characteristics are. I can, I know <laughs> who to avoid when I've done something stupid. I'm just looking at Ra. He is the ultimate British Dominican. Him. <laughs> I don't smoke the reefer. Nah. Back in the day, Alize was a creeper. Oh. I used to rock Patrick Cox and Ben Sherman like a geezer. I was a little man, chocolate boy, and the girls knew the sugar was sweeter. I see a body like, ah, oh, I was like, oi. Well, my mum's from Jamaica, and my dad's from Dominica. They was calling me English boy. They was just kept on calling me like Anglais, Anglais. That's like that was my name. Like so, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a culture shock, the accent, <laughs> for one. Um, it's got a rhythm to it, it's got like a tone to it, like a distinctive tone. Like, I could hear someone speaking and know that they're from Dominica. Hey, boy, it's like a fit now. He's like, when I got so when I talk, yeah, man, like, cool, like, cool, like, yeah, man. I dare, which is, I'm cool, I'm about. Um, Sakafet, how are you? Well, I'm fine. I frequently got Mekafute Okupie. Mekafute Okupie means I'll give you one kick. Mekafute mm. Okupie, which is. But it made me into the man I am today, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to be in Dominica on the beach selling coconuts and playing a guitar or something. <laughs> My mum shared so many stories when she was in. When she was from when she was in Dominica, and um, she was re she's really proud of the country. So we never didn't hear about Dominica. Yeah, she was always mentioning it. I was always hearing it on the phone to friends and stuff, speaking patwa and whatnot. But um, yeah, she shared loads of stories. She's really proud of her country. What I miss most about Dominica when I'm not there is just the purity of it, just how how natural and 
and fresh, fresh and organic it is, it's, it's something that I do feel cleanses me a lot. Silver sunlight is barren ground. Just speak to me, your native sound. And then we'll fly so high. And then we'll fly so high. Not a lot of people get to experience that, I would say, like going back to w where they're from, do you get me? So that's like where one of my parents is from. And to experience it, experience schooling out there, life out there, what it's like, what, what your grandparents have sacrificed in order to get here, to get you, I don't want to say it's like a better way of life, but to just give you like a, a different opportunity to what everyone else has back home. So. Yeah, for me, it's like, it's one of the things that's helped to shape me in my life now. On the count of three, I want you to make some epic noise. One, two, three. You need to know where you're from. Like, just in life, you just need to, because I think it helps you to understand life and just be a better person in general and, and become a more rounded individual and a better adult. It's, it's great for your history, it's great to be able to teach your kids where they're from, and then you just, you just understand about your life and more you can understand like your purpose. Whatever way, even even indirectly or directly, the country made who I am, like the, 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 the culture and sound and the way in which they speak and the way in which I speak and perform on stage, and to how I scat and to how I move, like it's Dominique, there, there's definitely many influences. Course, but at the same time, it's like without that, I'd be a totally different person. Yeah, like I can't wait to go back, like and just and just chill and just live because that's home. Do you get what I'm saying? Africa's obviously like the original home, but that's the home. Dominica's the home that I know. Yeah, those are the realest questions ever. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I heard all I needed to hear. So with an EC dollar and a dream, I set off to learn what excitement and stories awaited me in Dominica, the nature island. Welcome, okay? Nice. I have pictures and pictures and pictures, but as it there, without glass, without illumination, they just fade away. But I don't know if I can get them redone again and whatever, put a little color in it. That is, you see that dress I have not paid? <laughs> that was when I was 60. Free ships, 
they have turned into sharks. But here you will see a figure with blood dripping. Okay, I go downstairs to the studio. <laughs> Everybody called me Earl, but my name is not Earl at all. I love experimenting, I love meeting people, I love changing people. I love pleasing people. I do a lot of work with substance, but I do a lot of work to pay the rent, send my children to school. You know, I even pay the mortgage. I enjoy what I do, so yeah. sometimes I go overboard. That's why too many of my pieces go with things about my ancestors, my homeland, to communicate, so. You check what I mean? Yeah. See, that, that's why I wanted to dry. You have to give it layers and layers. My name really is Darius on my passport. He's my godfather who is also my uncle. Give me a nickname and it's stuck. Call me the Earl of Mumbatten, but the Mumbatten was dropped, and everybody started calling me Earl. I only knew my name <laughs> was Darius when I went for a passport. Oh my God, it's changing, eh, man. It is like folklore now that there are three Indian brothers who came from Matnik. One stayed Sufriere, one went to the list, one stayed in Point Michel. That's what I've been hearing ever since. Well, maybe because my grandfather was from Delis, I always reckon most Indians come from Delis. But when I go to Pennville, Portsmouth, there are many Indians there as well, and they all say we are related. Where well, is getting there? It's getting there, wow. Okay, one visit down. A new family member found. Time to hit the market in the capital of Dominica, Roseau, to find some more Etienne's. I must say, it's not every day you hear your family name openly debated by your country's president. Sounds like the Etienne family are scattered all over the place. The village of Lubia is a 15 minute walk from Roseau, so we'll start there. This is where many of my Etienne relatives who I never met grew up, went to school, and were even buried. It's a plot like this that my pups would have likely been laid to rest had he still lived here. So this is where my father went to school. I wonder what he was like. Did he sit at the back of the class like me? Much of what I learned about Dominica prior to arriving 
was from a historian by the name of Dr. Lennox Honeychurch. A tough man to tie down, I took a chance trip up to Cabritz National Park in Portsmouth to find out more about the man and our shared history. I was born in Portsmouth, which is the view right behind me here uh, on the hill in the hospital at the part of Portsmouth that's called Zikak. And that's where my heart still is, really, because I still live in the north. And of course, I'm involved very much with the uh, development project here at the Cabritz and um, uh, studies related to the development of Portsmouth in the future. My first job was in the radio station when I left school in Radio Dominica. It had just been set up. Previous to that, it was Windward Islands Broadcasting Service. And uh, I was a, a news reporter. But then I got involved in programs. And I felt, look, here's an opportunity to, to, to uh, educate everyone, including myself, about the history of Dominica in a very popular way. And I began the Dominica story as a series of programs on the radio. And then people said, wow, we enjoy that very much. Why don't you make it into a book? And so I transformed it into a book, which is the Dominica story, which has been going for the last almost 40 years. I think it is extremely important. And for years, I mean, you know, all of my adult life, I have been writing and encouraging its, its pre preservation. Because, you know, the thing is that they, it contains elements that link us to the island and the land. And, and uh, as island people, it's important that we do not lose this connection. Because, you see, there is so much in the folklore, in the Creole proverbs, uh, in the experiences of those people who live those lives that help us to live the life that we uh, have in Dominica today. And so it came as a shock, actually. It was, I wasn't asked specifically as an artist to design a flag. I submitted my design, and it was selected by the government of the day. Uh, there were a few changes that were made by the government um, in terms of placement of the colors, and some of them had to do with the, the rules of heraldry, um, which I was totally unaware of. And when the advertisement for the competition was, was placed, they never said, well, here are the rules of flag making. They said, just do a flag. And they didn't say, we want only three colors. Put as many colors as you want. And I did that. When I look at the flag today, I know sometimes it's, it causes some, some difficulties because it's, it's expensive to print, for example, because of the five colors. Um, the, the parrots is a little difficult for, for people to draw. But it is, I think, a very beautiful flag. And many people find it's, it's unique. And we, uh, as, as chairman of the Emblems Committee for a few years, and we were considering trying to simplify it. And I think that's still in the books. But, you know, to change a flag is like to change the name of a country. It's very expensive. And I think that might be a deterrent there. Dominica is a gold mine of pride, history, and pain. All around you, in the midst of the flora and the fauna, are abject reminders of a painful past at the hands of slavery and natural disasters. The people that tell their story of the island tell it with endearing passion and warmth. But is that enough to attract people here or indeed return? All right, if you're coming from London, Frankfurt, Paris, and those sort of places, and you're used to that sort of nightlife, and are looking for that sort of nightlife, you won't get it here. If you're looking for a country with this mass tourism, where you know you have a lot, a lot, a lot of visitors and uh, overcrowded beaches and overcrowded, <laughs> you know, discos and so on, everywhere you go is overcrowded. Dominica is not that type. 
Well, this is this is really a rumor, and um, for all intents and purposes, it is meant at really discrediting the government, um, giving the country a bad name which it doesn't deserve. But the beauty about it is that the people who, especially Dominicans living overseas, uh, who are on the on the internet and other uh, media, social media and otherwise, um, hearing and, and seeing photos, I suppose, of things in Dominica, when they actually visit the country, it's a different story. I know some young people who have said, oh, I would like to come back to live here. I mean, these are people like 24, 25, who have a life in London, you know, have a full life, have a social life, they go out, they know what it's like, and still they said, you know, they would like to come back to live here. So. If they are saying that at their age and they know London, you know, then it can't be that boring. How could you think all this is boring? We have so much to do. I mean, if you're not a nature lover, which everyone should be a nature lover, even separately from that, we have festivals going on. I mean, we have World Korean Music Festival, we have Goat Fest, we have Rabbit Fest, we have TTV Fest. Carnival, we have the Dominica Festival of Arts, we have the Emancipation, we have Independence, we have Christmas. We have Jazz and Creole in the park, which is up at our beautiful Cabris that was just renewed. The Calibishi Bay is also a wonderful, wonderfully beautiful bay with its red rocks and so forth. Like literally, any type of food or animal there is, we have a festival to celebrate that animal, eat that animal, have a pageant with that animal. <laughs> the food, um, yum yum. <laughs> Not too far from me, in walking distance, there's a river that flows by, fresh clean water. I live right on the bay, the Atlantic Ocean. Um, I have a small subsistence farm. I have chickens and ducks and turkeys and I grow vegetables outside. It's just, to me, it's, it's a great life. You're, I, I'm in touch with nature. Um, I'm, I like the simplicity of the life that I live. There's a certain level of quiet. There's a certain level of peace tranquility and, and you know people enjoy that as well. The other things to do in Dominica, I won't say that Dominica is very boring. It's just different pace with other places. What might be good for some people might not be good for Dominica. That's all I say. There are lots of things to do in Dominica. You just have to find the things that you enjoy. I flew in from with Leah and they came on time. I think they're trying to fix up because of your song. Yeah, I, I even heard that um, the CEO resigned after I made the song. So, boom, it's a man to represent you guys. Respect. Take care. My name is Wayne Benjamin, better known as Mr. Benji. Yeah, I, I know a few friends who are, have that similar story um, where, you know, their, their, their parents left and, you know, never returned. I, I too believe, yes, it, 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 that, that's one of the reasons why the, the cost of, um, of travel from, from the UK to the Caribbean is, is really high and that, that may be some of the reasons why some of them do not return. Um, sometimes, who knows, <laughs> could be other reasons why they couldn't return, but I, I believe some, sometimes it's because of, of flights.
Where did we be that crew? To be there rocking all night and day. All my goes on and we'll be there. Come on, raise your hands, CDA. Music city just carries it. Hope you have been to the movie of it. Oh, yeah. Raise your hands. Wow, what drives me to come back home? <laughs> um, I would have to say, the natural living. Even though things, things are tight, so they say, you, still, you could still eat a meal by going by the neighbor and, you know, ask for, uh, you know, can I get some sugar and that. And I believe that type of lifestyle here in Dominica is what really keeps most of us here and keep, keep most of us that, that travel wanting to come back. When I'm not in Dominica, the thing I absolutely miss the most is breadfruit and codfish. I'm not a fan of the ocean, so I don't really miss the ocean. Um, I miss the rivers somewhat to some extent, but my favorite thing in Dominica is breadfruit and codfish. <laughs> my mom's sisters and um, cousins, they all came from England, you know, they would visit us on occasion so there was quite a bit that you knew you know they spoke with an accent and would always tease them uh, like they would say want to run a race and we thought that they was talking about rice so, you know, <laughs> my grandfather on the other hand that is my dad's dad um the, f the last time actually he came back to, to dominica i was three and um he since yet hasn't ever reached like, returned home um, as a matter of fact, when my dad passed away, which was a, couple, a few years ago, he didn't, he didn't come to the funeral because it was a sudden death and um, one of the, the issues was, oh, it was going to be costly, you know, making a, a sudden trip. It's generally in my family, people who return are retired and like my grandfather, my dad, that's my mom's dad. He's here right now, so he spends six months out of the year in Dominica, and then he returns to Canada for the for the warmer parts of the year. Hello, this is Les Lassa Armour Schlingford and I am Miss Dominica 2013, Miss JC's 2013, Miss Caraval 2013, Miss Caribbean Culture 2013 and I was the representative for Miss Dominica on the Miss World stage. I love how honest we are. A Dominican will not lie to you. <laughs> if you're looking skinny that day, they say, Boje, you're looking megui. Like <laughs> They'll tell you what's up and it's all meant as endearing. It's meant to just let you know that they're noticing what's up with you. I love that about our people. It's definitely more than just being born here. It's having that pride in your country, having pride in the dance that we do, in the food that we cook and loving everything that Dominica has to offer, even the negatives, knowing that the positives will outweigh the negatives. And I think being Dominican means you want a better Dominica. You can't just come in and say, oh, I was born in Dominica, and so that's all that matters. No, you need to be making a conscious effort to better our country. We're only 70,000 people. We can't be excluding people. You know what I mean? Everyone needs to play their part. Being Dominican, yes, it is more than just being born here. Um, because, you know, some people are born here and they don't really feel a, an affinity or an identification if they've been abroad and, you know, they don't have anything to do with Dominica. Um, Dominicans are very special in their own way. I've lived in lots of different countries and I, I lived here for a year last year and I'm back now and um, they're just like, they're just Dominicans, man. You know, what can you say? And I love, I love Dominica. I really love being here and living here. Although it is very challenging, I don't like to use, I'm trying not to use the word frustrating, but it's very challenging and there's a lot of potential.
the people who I've met and spoken to who uh, know of Dominica, either they've been here or they've seen something of it on the television or whatever, or read something, it's like, wow, yeah, it's really wow, you know, like paradise, you know, nature so green, and um, that's, that's, you know, wow, that's the word, and that would be my, my description, you know, the nature here is just, it's overwhelming, and it's just so beautiful, and it's so intense, um, and that characterizes the people as well, you know, um, yeah, it, it's very powerful, but it's also very um, embracing. That's my description. I arrived during the celebration of Dominica's 35th year of independence from British rule. Hands before the Lord as we ask Him for His grace and mercy on these afternoon's proceedings. Our Father and our God, we come to you this afternoon giving you thanks and praise for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. We are grateful to I you, do uh, take great pride in representing Dominica and its very unique and unusual features, you know, particularly community activity, the way in which Dominica is divided into these little enclaves, these little villages, and each village has a characteristic and a personality. It has to do with the, the culture and the history of the island, which gives it a particular flavor of life, a particular style. Of, of living and a particular type of thinking, a way of thinking as well. What do you miss most about Dominica when you're not here? Freedom, Dominica too free. Dominica is too free, you can do whatever you want in Dominica, man, and no harassment. Every I've traveled Europe, North America, man, you have strict rules and regulation, man. Strict, strict rules and regulation. Yeah. I'm learning wonderfully new things about Dominica with a little help from my newfound family. On the last stop of my cultural tour, I'm meeting the person politically responsible for retaining it. Dominica, we've had a lot of discussions about possibly changing the name of Dominica yeah, to White to Kobuli, which is the Carib name, the Carinago name, or Dominique, which is you know a French version of the Domini of Dominica. But um, at the end of the day, Dominicans I find are very Dominican and they feel that the name Dominica belongs to them, like White to Kobuli and they feel that they should not be the ones to change the name, their name. This is a name given to us, which has meaning, it has significance. And um, But I feel personally that the owners should be on the Dominican Republic, I think. Maybe the leaders of the two countries can get together <laughs> sometime <laughs> and um, come to some kind of agreement where the Dominican Republic will change its name <laughs> and not us. <laughs> I, I would say that um, previous governments and our administration at this point in time um, have taken a, a concerted effort uh, in ensuring that Dominica's culture and Dominica's heritage is maintained for generations to come. Whether it's just to wear the Creole wear, uh, to dance the Creole dance, uh, to speak the language on Creole Day, um, I think that augurs well for us as a country and for our future, especially all amongst our young people. And if, if they can develop the right attitudes in terms of our culture and our heritage, certainly uh, Dominica will continue to remain on the map. So the day had arrived. I was going to visit the home that my pops grew up in. Now, I only remember it from a single photo I saw at my aunt's earlier in the week. Um, Sorry, I've been wondering if you can um, help me find this place. It's, it's, it's my first time here, so I'm, I'm a little bit lost. 
actually we are. I can show you around if you like. Oh, marvelous. Sorry, my name is Richard, by the way. Hi, I'm Naomi. So we're in Lubia right now. Okay. So as you can see, on the base side. Yeah, one of these. Ah, uh, you know what? I think it's this one. This, this Yeah, yeah. This this one used to be my dad's. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> okay, okay. You reckon anyone's in? We should try. Yeah. Hello? Good afternoon. It's a shame, it's a shame, it'd have been nice, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Next time. Yeah. I mean, he was here till, till he was eight. But yeah, this is insane. Like, to think that my dad actually <coughs> lived here up until he left for England. I don't even know which room he was in, you know? Uh, Guess I'll find out. I'll find out eventually, you know. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to finding out. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So not quite the wrapped-up conclusion I was hoping for. But I guess that's how life is sometimes. I'm nearing the end of my time in Dominica. Equipped with even more questions than when I arrived, I thought now would be a good time to meet with someone who knows a fair bit about running this country. So you live on Sunday, you said? Pardon me? When do you leave? You oh, I live in London. No, when do you leave? Oh, when do I leave? I leave, I leave town on, um, on Sunday and I leave here on Tuesday. Okay. I go back to England on Tuesday. Oops, failed the Dominica accent test. What's your fondest memory? I think I think the whole experience of, of, of growing up in, uh, in in Dominica. I mean, open space, uh, rural community. Um, you have a closer knit uh, community, unlike yourselves who may not know who your neighbour is. <laughs> you know, um, so it, it, it is more of a community rather than, than just a, a place where you live and, and um, neighbours looking out for each other neighbors assist in each other. And I think it's, it's an important part of, of, of growing up. I think generally it's a place that you will come to, to enjoy yourself. And, and it's, it's different than everywhere else. Um, and uh, especially if you, if you have uh, family connections there and uh, being able to, to know who they are and, 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 and venture out and finding out who they are is it, a, a wonderful experience. And, um, also a nostalgic experience too, you know. This is the community country that your parents were born in. That's where they, they grew up before they, they um, migrated to the United Kingdom. Okay. Thank you so much. My pleasure and all the best then. Really okay. It. All right. Pleasure. Every single Dominican, whether they live in Dominica or overseas, you are welcome back to your native island. Make yourself at home. Dominica is ours to cherish. The Dominican, let's build it. Let's forget all this negative criticism. This is a government that entertains positive criticism and we have never possessed, we, we have never said that we possess every single idea in terms of taking this country forward. We embrace you here today and we look forward to the interactive session where we can discuss to take this country to the next level. I maintain, no matter where you are in the world, 
you are a dominator. And so you should not allow anybody in this country or anywhere else to make you believe that you are less of a Dominican or you're not a Dominican. So I want to welcome you to our country, Dominica, as we celebrate our 45th anniversary of independence. And it is important for us to ask ourselves a very important question. Not only who is here present, but those listening. What type of Dominica do I want? And what am I prepared to do towards achieving that desired goal for Dominica? Thank you. I think I'll stand. Papale Patwe Bamwe, so please go easy on me. I was reading a really interesting book by a Dominican historian called uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Lennox Honichach. The book was called A Dominica Story, and it was literally that. It was you know, a, a detailed tale of Dominica from its earliest written records to present day. And that's when it hit me. I'm going to do a documentary following my Dominica story as I go back and find out more about my, my heritage. So now the story progresses to the, the month of October 2013, stepping off the plane, off my Lee app, which was actually on time, and I, you know, collect my baggage, I go through the, the street, onto the streets of Dominica for the first time, and the very first word spoken to me by a complete stranger was simply, are you Richard? Oh. And I was, like, perplexedly nodding, like, okay. And he just went, welcome home. And it's wonderful to see young people like yourself so involved in the community. You are the bedrock of, of Wolf and Forest. Thank you very much. I to hear that actually you went back home and your feelings and why he was explaining the whole story. I was trying to look around the room and watching every single one of these people and, and the joy that they had in their eyes and their face. It just shows, you know, what. Um, how powerful your, your your story is! Thank you. uh, it's just a, a really really good, and um, yeah, I'm sure you, uh, you've certainly inspired me. The Dominican diaspora community in London have created a number of networks and organisations that meet regularly throughout the year. In three months, I attended meetings and social events from three different organisations. It's quite a lot for a community that hails from an island of only 72,000 inhabitants. I don't have any Dominican stories from my background because I only discovered quote unquote Dominica 30 years ago so it's my 30th Dominican birthday in January which I'm going to be celebrating it in Dominica. <laughs> I'm born and brought up in London of um, Scottish and Welsh and English background so I'm very you know grounded in this country and um, in, in that sense, I don't have an, an awareness of the other place, which I think um, many Dominicans who were born here or came here when they were very small have that sense of not of incompleteness, perhaps. I think that's the word that people have told me. Um, and so the sense of going back 
is very important. In St. Lucia, for example, a lot more St. Lucians went back and the population of St. Lucia is reflected in the population of St. Lucia, which is what, about 150,000? It's about double, isn't it? Double Dominica's. that of Dominica. Yes, yes. You understand? On a smaller... On a much smaller, on a smaller yeah. island. Yeah. Whereas um, very few um, have gone back to Dominic, and I think it's very largely to do with um, economic economic considerations. I think you'd find that if there was an expansion um, of the uh, so-called economic growth in Dominica, a lot of people would go back. We ready? Once a small but vibrant island nation, buzzing with art, culture, music, and life, all of that is now gone. The entire country has been reduced to a debris field. In September 2017, the Caribbean experienced its most destructive hurricane season in decades. Oh, yeah. Our homes are flattened. Our buildings roofless, our water pipes smashed, and road infrastructure destroyed. Our hospital is without power, and schools have disappeared beneath the rubble. Our crops are uprooted. Where there was green, there is now only dust and dirt. The desolation is beyond imagination. The stars have fallen. Eden is broken. A new report by the UN carries a stark warning. The world has little more than a decade to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere, or it may be too late to reverse the worst effects of climate change. Madam President, a few days following the passage of Hurricane Maria, our Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, stood before this august body and sounded a call for action. He called for the world to wake up and take note that the war of climate change had come to our shores. He echoed a call to all countries, big and small, developed and developing, to come together to save our planet. One year later, where are we? While large countries dominated the headlines, it was the small island nation of Dominica that suffered the worst devastation it had ever seen at the hands of Hurricane Maria. Dominica intends to become the world's first climate-resilient nation. However, I fear our consumption in the West of natural resources, plus our emissions of harmful gases is not declining at a fast enough rate meaning there may not actually be a Dominica to return to in the future. Going to Dominica opened my eyes to so much. It introduced me to new family. And allowed me to pay respects to family of yesteryear. It gave me a sense of pride and honor. to meet some of the colorful characters that keep the island so vibrant, so welcoming, so beautiful. To feel closer to my father than ever before, from visiting his childhood school, to sitting outside the very house he lived in until he left for the UK.
With climate change effects increasing, an aging family reluctant to travel, encouraging our mum to return home is more important than ever before. I'll give the last word to my brother. Who like that? Definitely. I, I, you know, she said she wants to go back. She definitely wants to go back with us. Um, you know, she's got her kids. So we're all big now, so we can go together as a family. Grandma's always coming over here. You know, always coming over here, and she loved grandma so much. So you know, to go and see grandma, go back home. You know. Yeah. She will love that. Um, so I'm hoping we can do it together as a family. Um, obviously, I'd love to take Mandy, take my wife, take her to go and see um, my heritage, you know, show her off to granny and granddad. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, she'll love it.